Okay, Sister Span, so Season 8 is back and we are in full effect with a new set of 22 episodes of the series. So, uh, based on my math, as I mentioned in other videos before, unless we have a mini hiatus, maybe on Christmas Day, Season 8A should last between, well, last night the 16th, all the way until December 25th, which is Christmas Day, which should also be the mid-season finale. I gotta say... Looking at this one episode, not talking about what's uh, supposed to happen down the line or season seven. When I look at season eight, episode one, I think it was a pretty fantastic episode. I know some people would say that it's just okay because this was the interrogation episode. But to me, it really was good in terms of the acting, especially the writing, the camera work, the lighting. It was pretty dang good. So I am giving it a 9 out of 10. I mentioned this on Twitter last night and during my live stream. I think that this was a pretty strong start to the season. However, I can understand if some people are like, oh great, how long are they going to stretch this out? Which in turn goes back to why I think it is somewhat concerning that the team on sisters are airing at the same time. Because, you know, after only two weeks and, you know, the whole thing of, wait a minute. How long can we keep Zach from knowing the truth about Jeremiah and what he did to Fatima? The way they're stretching that out. Unlike Sisters, though, we get two episodes a week of Zatima, as opposed to just one, because think of it this way. We are six episodes into season three. And at the tail end of season three, episode six, Zach finds out part of the story. So we can tell this is probably going to be stretched out until the mid-season finale. But with Sisters... We're probably going to, well, do the same thing. I, I, I said this a few weeks ago, mid-season finale. I think that's probably when we're going to find out who did it because we have different characters pointing the finger at others, coming up with their own theories. Heck, even Zach and Fatima mentioned that they're going to work together to try to find out who did it, uh, leading to the murder board in uh, episode two. But I would say the only thing I didn't like was that for whatever reason, Andy is still not bringing up Gary's ultimatum, which was why she flip flopped from being with Jordan. Well, actually being willing to testify against Gary to breaking up with Jordan, getting back together with Gary to marry him. And then after that, there's a knife in his chest and it's like, whoa, whoa this looks freaky, suspicious. What's going on here? So, um, what I'll do first is break down my thoughts on the interrogations themselves. I think what really made them shine, again, was the writing. The acting, great, because of course, you know, it doesn't matter if you have a good script, but if the actors aren't able to translate the words on the paper to a believable scene on camera, it's not going to work. But I think there were a lot of clever writing cues in this particular um, scene or in these particular scenes. I think one of my favorites was Agent Watt trying to connect Karen to the stabbing by mentioning her first salon that burnt down to her new salon to Roots to Riches and that being connected by an investor, Marie Willis, who was also a former investor in Gary's company. And she lost a lot of money by doing that. And it's just a lot of things going on. Oh, side note, can we take a moment to talk about how Karen got so many jabs by the detectives for being, um, well, actually Detective Morgan and Special Agent Wyatt, but a Watt. But basically, there were so many shots fired at her about being pregnant by two by two men at the same time. That was pretty wild. Yeah, yeah it was the two of them and Hudson. That was, that was pretty funny. But, um... Hudson was pretty much talking to Detective Morgan. Thankfully, the detective was able to see right through him because Hudson was trying to mention how, oh man, she's, you know, um, you know, a gold digger and whatnot, and she probably was the one that did it. And he brings up the point like, wait, but why would she stab him prior to um, going through with the marriage? Because if they got married, then she could have taken all of his assets and whatnot. But Hudson was just grasping at straws. Um, Karen, like I said, she, you know, got grilled a bit. Sabrina, I, I love the, and maybe I'm reading too much into this, but I love what they did here. I want to talk about Sabrina real quick. 
So if you combine her interrogation scene to the scene at her apartment where she's sitting with Rich, I think she might be experiencing some sort of PTSD, which is completely understandable because not too long ago, Sabrina got arrested, was fired from her job, and was put behind bars and on the verge of going to prison for, what, like 15, 20 years for a crime she didn't even commit. So for her to be back in an interrogation room again, being questioned and whatnot, it could definitely shake a person to the core. So I like the fact that her interrogation, while she was, you know, seemingly holding herself together, uh, she stormed out of there and the detective was like, hey, you know, maybe you can get a temporary temporary insanity plea or something and then she just bounces and then rich was there to comfort her um and I, I just liked it it was a pretty good scene because i'm like wow we we might be getting some uh you know strong depth to these characters this season oh also uh talking about rich over at the juice shop tony swings by and you know obviously okay okay so the stabbing took place saturday night and this is obviously monday morning given the fact that you know, everybody's talking about how, man, the interrogations are rough. And now I got to take a moment to collect myself before I go into the salon, before I go to the bank, before I go to the airport. So, yeah, this is definitely the start of a new week. And um, you can tell there's no love lost between Andy and these guys because Rich, you know, he he blames Andy for this. Like, you know what? It's, it's uh, Andy's messy self. You know, if she wasn't messing around with Gary behind Jordan's back and whatnot, then none of this would have happened. You know, like we wouldn't be tied into this. Or our girls wouldn't be tied into this. And I'm thinking like, even though Rich doesn't have the full story, he does have a point. So, and also keep in mind, in their minds, they don't know why Andy broke up with Jordan to be with Gary in the first place. So remember that. They they don't know. But basically, um, they're just trying to figure out exactly what, you know, they could do about it aside from just being there from the women because they haven't heard from them yet. So, um, speaking of Tony's woman, my favorite interrogation, even though I love the writing for the Karen one, Danny's, I don't give up attitude was everything, you know, smoking on her pen. She was just basically, <laughs> she was the crazy part about Danny was that she was so, Hey, I'm just here. Cause I gotta be here what's that meme? It's like, you know, I'm just here. So I ain't got to pay a fine. Like, you know, athletes and whatnot. Danny was so chill about this. You know, Hey, I, I told Andy, I, I burned this place down. Me and the girls showed up to protect our girl. I said, I would burn this chapel down. So before I even got to the gas station, he got shish kebab. <laughs> Whoever did it needs a key to the city. And, the, and then Watts like, you know what? That's so crazy. You you didn't stab him, did you? No. <laughs> it, it reminded me of that one episode of the Wayans Brothers where um that I forgot the white dude's name, but he was the one he want he wanted revenge on Sean for getting him fired for his uh from his job at the uh, advertising agency, and he was like a, a he was like a tax accountant or something, and he wanted to get revenge on Sean and Marlon and Pops. And then Pops like, look, what you need to do is put a Luna foil hat on, uh, bring a toothbrush, no toothpaste, and then act crazy. And then, because when I did it at one time, that uh, accountant said, get this crazy man the hell out of my office. And then when they went down to the office, Pops did all those things, the brown paper bag, the receipts. <laughs> he had them all jumbled up. He had the tinfoil hat and the toothbrush, and then they let him go. And it was funny because that's exactly how I felt watching uh, Danny in this scene. But, you know, she was all free and clear. And I love that we got that sneak peek where she was writing in her journal because, like I said before, we're just showing the growth and the continuity of her therapist really helping her out. Um, and the fact that Andy being so close, well, Andy uh, being so close to the Gary stabbing and Andy being one of the girls in her circle is making her think about her own trauma. And we do see some uh, disassociation there where Danny wants to clearly get her mind off of things because anything that Anytime she's on the grasp of going back to her own trauma from either her college days or the Jonah situation or both, she wants a distraction. And when Tony swings by, what's the first thing? Let's have sex. And he's like, no, 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 no. You just went through a lot. There's a man in the hospital right now who was about to marry your friend. 
and you just got through an interrogation. So you j you want to have sex right now? So yeah, I do feel like, you know, we're going to get some more growth with these characters. So I am looking forward to that. Now, over in the interrogation, another sneak peek. That's the thing. I feel like when you combine all the sneak peeks, I feel like I saw about 10 minutes of the episode already. But Zach pretty much says, like, you know what? I want an attorney. I'm not saying anything, bro. And I love that because Zach has had way more experience in these kind of situations than anyone else. And, you know, he pulls a w Will Smith. Keep my woman's name out your effing mouth and off your suspect list. So when we flip over to um, Fatima and what don't learn nothing much you know he does talk about how you know true uh true, true crime podcast and whatnot and uh fatima ain't budging that's pretty much it simply put nobody really tells him anything that's the best way to put it um then we go over to the zach thing again and i want to mention that detective morgan th these people go for some low blows here it's like well you know what wouldn't it be something if Heather finds out about her baby daddy and fiance being on the suspect list of a murder attempt? Who's going to raise that poor little mute boy of yours now? And Zach was like, you threatening my son? <laughs> He's like, hey, tell me why I need to know and I don't have to. I'm like, dang, they playing dirty up in here. So from there, um, Hayden is packing a split town. We don't know exactly where he's going or why he's leaving. I feel like they're really trying to pile on the whole, hey, look at all these things Hayden is doing. It's clear he's the one that stabbed him. I don't think so. But I do like how the news report is covering this situation, mentioning Gary, the stabbing, Andy, you know, her current accolades, like winning the huge, law, uh, you know, divorce settlement for Marie at the uh, law firm. And as a result, you know, oh, also Marie was connected to Gary as well back in the day with the whole thing of, you know, investing in the company. So really, really stirring the pot here. And Gary, I mean, Hayden's like, ah, Gary got what's his and Andy's going to get what's hers. Because remember, he's still bitter about not getting partner. So in the midst of him about to leave ATL, Tamara's at the door. And we don't really follow up on that scene until next week, sadly. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, Karen's going over a work schedule at the apartment and Pam comes by with breakfast. Pam's rocking a new look. And, um, she does mention, it's like, so why are you surprised I'm here? I'm just checking on you, girl. I'm here to give you a ride to work and everything. I thought we were friends, right? Remember what happened at the, uh, mocktail when I had your back against Fatima and them? Remember that? Remember that? I mean, honestly, I wish we can kind of forget about that to be, I don't, nobody wants to think about that mid-season finale of season seven, because that's when we learned the whole Zach was the daddy of one, not both and the maybe. So, um, that's really all we have from this particular scene. So from there, we go over to the sneak peek of Zach and Fatima discussing the interrogations and Fatima pointing the finger at Zach. And the main thing we learn here is that in off screen land, Zach and Fatima, when they arrive to the wedding venue, they split up and that's all we know. And neither one of them knows what the other one was up to. Fatima does mention she didn't do it because she uses knives for torture, not murder. So that's interesting, I guess. But they pretty much agree that, look, the cops are no doubt going to be questioning us once again. So we got to figure something out. They pretty much want to put their heads together and discover who actually killed Gary Borders. So uh, from there, we go over to the hospital and uh, Hudson is rushing in there and he's like, wait, did he die? Is he dead? Well, the doctor says, no, he's one tough SOB. That actually got a genuine laugh out of me. But, you know, during the surgery, he did technically die, but we were able to revive him. But he's in there right now. So, you know, Hudson is glad Gary's still alive. Now, aside from that, um, the only other thing was talking about Andy's interrogation with Watt. Uh, as I mentioned in another video, it is understandable why he's been out of shape that one minute Andy's wanting, willing to cooperate to bring Gary down. Next thing you know, she breaks up with her boyfriend to get back together with him. And then they they trade some interesting blows. I mean, what? Man, if Andy was getting bent out of shape whenever she got read by someone like Robin, Watt was just going for like the full on, you know, just stomach shots, like boom, boom, right to the gut. <laughs> Talking about her being, you know, an opportunist, materialistic, you know, um, 
bringing up Jordan. Uh, it's like you jump from one person to another. And what about Penelope? You know, the oh yeah, yeah, Jordan does get interrogated as well. I completely forgot about that. Um, the fact that he was in the left in the dark about the Penelope situation and Andy saying that, oh, that's my legal client. So I wasn't able to tell you. And, you know, he kind of snapped a bit during the interrogation where it's like, ah, okay, that passion and rage, you may, you may have done it. Like, what was your purpose for going down to the uh, wedding venue? Um, um, and then that explains why Tony and Rich are upset because, you know, their boy is caught in this mess because of Andy. But, um, Andy just refused to tell Watt anything. But my favorite exchange was towards the end of the episode where he mentions like, you know, you know, I'm sick of women like you in terms of like, you know, you say you want a good man, but then you throw him away to the, uh, you know, the side to get back to together with some toxic dude who treats you wrong. And then you want to scream out, uh, that you need help. And next thing, you know, a dozen other women say me too. And I'm like, dang, that, that, that. He's, he's, he's speaking some facts on that but then Andy clapped back by saying like well what about men like you who ignore the men who are in power and what not those seemingly nice guys who do these shady things in the background because if you didn't and they were brought to you know if their dark deeds were brought to the light no one would have to scream me too oh I was like oh okay now this is getting good so then when Andy was seemingly about to tell her uh tell what why she went back to Gary in the first place aka the ultimatum Robin stepped in and I'm like oh 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 and that was it that was it like I said this is a pretty solid episode guys I mean if you are on the fence about watching because season seven was bad I can understand but I encourage you to watch just this one episode just like I said, isolated from everything else. And it was a very good episode. Seriously. So with that being said, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like and subscribe and I will catch you in the next one.